Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my Java tutorial series. Today, we're going to cover looping, and this is going to be the first part of the tutorial that actually is interesting. And this guy, we're going to start off with public class again, just like before, and we're going to call this Java Lesson 4. And then, just like before, we're going to create ourselves a main function inside of here. So public, again, means it can be run by anybody. Static means that it is called by a class, and void means it's not going to return anything. Then we go main, and we go string to gather our string objects, whether they're there or not. And I'm going to get more into that in the later tutorials, of course. And then the first thing I'm going to cover here is the while loop. I'm going to start off kind of boring, but we're going to get a lot more interesting later on in the tutorial. Now, the major difference between the while loop and the for loop, which we're going to see a little bit later, is that the loop iterator or the counter or just simply the iterator is created outside of the loop structure, just as we did right there. Then we're going to create our while loop. And what this guy is going to do is it's going to print 1 through 20 out on the screen. So less than or equal to is needed. If we want to print 1 through 20, if we didn't have that equal sign, it would only print 1 through 19. And then just uh, keep it simple, system out, print line, put I inside of there. And then don't forget to increase the value of your iterator. In this situation, we're going to increase it by 1. And if we run this, I think you know it's just going to print 1 through 20 out on the screen over here. And that's exactly what it just did. And now to make things a little bit more interesting, because remember I promised you, I'm going to make this more interesting. Let's say you wanted to skip over printing the value of 3. And then while I'm doing this, I'm also going to show you what the continue statement does. So we'll say if i is equal to 3, we want to do something different. And basically that different thing is we want to increment by 2. Remember you want to do this, otherwise you could potentially mess up all the other things you're doing here and not print out the screen the way you want to. And then we're going to use continue. And what continue does is it just jumps out of this iteration of the while loop and jumps back up here and it starts running the while loop from the beginning or from where it left off. So it's going to hit 3. We're going to change the value of the loop iterator from 3 to 5 in this situation. The reason why we're skipping to 5 is here in a minute I'm going to show you how to just print odd numbers except for 3 onto the screen. So that's what it's going to do. It's going to come down here, i is going to be equal to 3, we're going to change it to 5, and then we're going to jump back up here and then continue executing from 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's how it works. But if I just simply run this, you can see it's going to print 1, 2, skip 3 and 4, and then continue on printing everything just as it was before. So that's what the continue statement does. And why that's important is if we decided that we wanted to only print odd numbers onto the screen, in this situation, we're going to throw another if into here, and then we're going to go i, and we're going to use the modulus, 2 is equal to 0. And this is how we can figure out whether a number is even or odd. And whenever you would divide this guy by 2 and it comes back as 0, you know in that situation you're dealing with an odd number. So we're going to come down here and we are going to increment this guy. And if we file save that, you can see that it prints 1, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, and 19. So that would be a little trick there using an if statement to only print odd numbers. And now I'm going to get into the other thing that's a little bit interesting here that you can use inside of these different looping structures, all of them actually. I'm going to use the break statement. And I'm going to say if i is greater than 10 at any point in time, I want to break out of the loop altogether. And what that means is it's going to terminate the loop altogether, and it's going to jump down here to the end of the while area right there, and it's going to continue executing afterwards. And if we execute this, you can see that's exactly what it did. Continued, it printed 1, skipped 3, then printed 5, then 7, and then 9. It hit 10, and the break statement ended the loop prematurely. So that's the difference between the continue and the break, and a little bit of information on the while loop as well. Now let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's come in here and let's just delete all of this and let's start over. Now I'm going to show you how to calculate the value for pi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a double and I'm going to call it my pi and it's going to be 4.0. This is going to be my starting value for pi and pi is 3.14 blah 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 blah. It goes on forever and ever and ever. I'm going to show you how to calculate it. And then I'm going to have my starting value for my loop iterator in my loop. And this will make sense in a second. So I'm going to go j is equal to 3.0. And if you want to calculate pi, there's a comment, what you do is you would go 4 minus 4 divided by 3 plus 4 divided by 5 minus 4 divided by 7. See, it's the same thing. You start off with 4, that's this guy up here, and then you're going to subtract 4 divided by 3, add 4 divided by 5, and it goes 3, 5, 7, 9, 
and on and on and on. It's going to continue putting 4 divided by whatever the next odd number is. So I'm going to figure out how to do that. I'm going to leave that on the screen there just so you can look at it. So if I want to do that, let's start off real simple. Just understand this is a very basic version of how to calculate pi. Let's say I want to do this 11 times. So I want to make a calculation 11 times to get closer and closer and closer to pi. And the more numbers I add up here, the closer to the value of pi we're going to get. So if I want to calculate this, I go my pi is equal to my pi minus, and I'm going to go 4 divided by j plus, put these brackets around this again, make sure you get your brackets in here right, plus, and I'm going to go 4 divided by j plus 2. And I got my closing brackets there. And then I'm going to increase the value of j by 4. And then I'm going to print out the screen system out print line. And I'm going to print out the value of my pi as we get closer and closer to pi. And then on top of that, after this is all over, I'm actually going to print pi out the screen. And all the code is available underneath of this video. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to say this is going to be the real value of pi. Uh, and if at any point in time you don't quite get what I'm doing here, just leave a little comment below and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. And if we execute this, you can see that it printed out some calculations here that are going to get proceedingly closer and closer to this value of pi. So it goes from 3.4666 to 3.333. It's way off, but the only reason it's way off is I haven't performed enough calculations. So let's instead do 8001 and let's try executing this guy again. And you can see it's getting closer and closer to pi. Now it's 3.141. And if we continue going at this rate, like let's say we do 100,001, and you can see that it's getting very close to the value of pi. So now we have 3.1416, and here it is 3.14159. And then if we just continue, you can add a million. I mean, you know, it's a computer. It's powerful. It can do anything. That's just a nice, interesting way of using a while loop to actually do something. So let's get rid of all that again. Let's say you wanted to execute a while loop until the user says to stop. Well, just create a string, and I'm going to call this C-O-N-T, Y, or n is equal to, and I'm going to give it a value of capital Y. Then I'm going to create an int, h is equal to 1. And in this situation, since I'm going to be waiting for user import, I'm going to use our little scanner that we talked about previously. So I got to load that in here so we can use it. There's a little library that allows us to capture user input. And then right here before main, I'm going to create my scanner object that's going to monitor this keyboard input scanner. I'm going to call it user input. You can call it whatever you want. User input's just a name I made up. Scanner. And then remember, system.in, which is going to monitor the keyboard. Okay, so now I can accept user input. And then we can go while, C-O-N-T, Y or N. And let's go equals ignore case. The situation is going to ignore whether they enter a uppercase or a lowercase Y. So just put that inside of there. Create our while loop. I'm going to go system out print line. And what this guy's going to do is it's going to continually increment H and print out values on the screen as long as the user says that they want to see these values come out on the screen. Well, let's just change this to print and say continue Y or N. Put a space there. And we're going to continue Y or N is equal to, and we're going to say user input. And then next line, what this is going to do is it's going to ex accept a string input from the user. That's all this guy's going to do for us is accept that and then save that to continue Y or N. And then up here, check whether it was a Y or anything actually is going to cancel it out. If it's not an uppercase or a lowercase Y, it's going to end the loop. And then here, don't forget to increment H. Add a little typo there. And up here, let's just make that uppercase. And now we can execute. And you can see it printed out one to the screen is saying continue. And if I put a Y in there, it's going to print out another one. If I put a capital Y, it's going to print out another one. If I put an N, it's going to cancel out. But just so you know, I'm going to put a J in there and it's going to end it all together. So that is another way to continue using a while loop based off of user inputs. So that's also kind of interesting. And now we don't need any of these other different things inside of here because I'm going to go in here and start showing you how to use the do while loop. Now, I never use the do while loop like ever. Um, I'm just not acclimated to using it. Maybe you are. Maybe you will be. Who knows? But either way, it's important to understand how it operates. And pretty much the only difference between a do while loop and a while loop is that you use a do while loop when you want to absolutely guarantee that code is going to be executed at least once. And like a while loop, you're going to use your loop iterator or initialize it outside of your looping area.
and you just go do. And some people put the little bracket there. I like to keep it everything consistent, put it down there. I don't personally think it matters. It's up to you. I'm going to go system, out, print, line, and then we'll just go K. And here we're going to increment K. And instead, why don't we make this 10, just to really show you exactly what's going on here. And then at the end of it, you go, wow, K is less than 10. Okay, so while K is going to be equal to 10 here right from the very beginning. So with a while loop, this normally would never execute. But you're going to see here that it doesn't check the value of K before it goes through this guy. And if we execute it, you'll see that. And you'll see that it actually still prints out 10, even though it does not function here. And you could actually come in here and do whatever you want. Put in 100,000. And you can be certain that it's going to come through here, execute all of this code on this line and this line, and then check if it should have executed. So that's the difference between the while and the do while loop. And also one of the biggest mistakes is people forget the semicolon. So definitely don't forget that. And then finally, we have our for loop. And it's just another looping tool for Java. And the basic layout for it is four. And then you're going to declare your iterator, or your loop iterator, or your counter, or whatever you want to call it. Put a semicolon. Then define the conditional for continually looping through this guy. And then at the end, you're going to change the value of your iterator. So let's make one. Let's just go four. I'm going to go int. I'm going to go L is equal to 10. And then we'll, this is going to continue to iterate as long as L is greater than or equal to 1, semicolon, and we have L. And in this situation, we're going to count backwards. And don't put a semicolon right here. We don't need it. And we we'll come down here, put our brackets, and everything inside here is going to execute. System, print line. And in this situation, we're going to print L out to the screen. Of course, don't forget out. And if we execute, you're going to see it prints 10, 9, 8, 7, the whole way down to 1. And one thing that's kind of interesting is if we took this guy right here, system out, and tried to print it outside of the for loop, it is not going to work. It's going to throw an error. And you can see that that's exactly what it's doing here. And the reason why is you declared this value of L or this variable or attribute of L inside of the for statement. So it only exists inside of the for statement. So that's just one thing to sort of worry about or think about. And then just to cover some other things that are kind of different about the for loop, you can actually declare your variables outside of the for loop if you would want to be able to use them. So let's go int m n. So there they are, they're declared outside. And you can also use multiple values inside of your for loop. So, and also initialize multiple values. So let's say we have m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2, right like that. And then we can put our conditions in here. And of course, you can have multiple different conditions, semicolon. And then we can also iterate by more than just one or D de declamate or whatever you want to call it. See, as I'm doing right there with that shorthand notation, it's equal to two. And this provides for just another way to print out numbers in lists, print line. And in this situation, I'm going to print out M plus is equal to, and this is sort of the long way to print out one through uh, nine onto the screen here. And we execute you can see that it prints out 1 through 10 onto the screen. So there's a whole bunch of different ways to look at looping inside of Java. I'll leave any questions or comments below. Next time, we're going to cover methods or functions. Depends on what you want to call them. Till next time.